Wow, what a blessing. He said that he was there because God wanted us to bless him. He helped us. And he'll never know. And Calvary, you'll have to help me on this. He'll never know what he did for us. What he doesn't know, and I hate to just jump right into it. Where'd Brother Jones go? Brother Jones, the song that you sung about broken for you, being broken, that's what it takes, then break me. But we had been through a battle at Calvary. I mean, it was, I've got a few of my deacons here, and it was a struggle. It was a battle that we went through. And whenever I called your pastor, uh, we weren't in the midst of a storm. We weren't going through a battle. We were just worshiping the Lord. And as we do about two times a year, we'll have a revival. We may have a youth uh, jubilee or some type of a youth event. But we generally have a couple revivals a year. And it was just at that time that uh, we were going to have that revival. And I had called Brother Jason to have him start praying about it. But he stepped right in, and Miss Tiffany, I don't know where Miss Tiffany's at. She's probably here somewhere. Y'all, are you a Baptist? You sit in that same spot every time, Miss Tiffany? Then if I ever come back, I'm gonna, I'll know where you're at now. But we're Baptists as well. But Tiffany blessed us in song, and Brother Jason, if he wasn't broken, you'll hear this throughout this message. If he wasn't broken, he could not have helped us. That may not mean anything to you right now, but if we weren't broken, we could not have helped you. That's the way, that's the way that God orchestrated all of this. Uh, it was a broken pastor to a broken people. And the Lord just, it was just, and I can't even begin to tell you the blessings that happened after he came and beyond that. But on the last night, I think it was a six-night revival, five or six-night revival, he, he wasn't done, and we needed more. So I believe it was in the fall, October, November, he came back and ministered to us again for another week, and what a blessing that it was. We love your pastor and his dear wife, and I pray that as he fights Amalek, as he fights the enemies of God, as he stands bold in his faith, I pray that he's got some errands. And I do pray that he's got some hers. I hope that he's got a Joshua that's ready to prop him up on the rock, which is Christ. And a couple people hold up his arms and just help him as he ministers here. It's a, it's a daunting task to pastor through the COVID years, we didn't know what to do as pastors, and we didn't know if we were supposed to come in or not come in, and uh, we started having parking lot services, and then we went into our family life center, and it was just a, it was a minefield for the pastors to maneuver, because if we didn't have services, uh, it was woe unto the pastor that called off his service, and if we tried to do something a little bit different, it, it become uh, just a, it was a problematic time for pastors. And for 22 plus years, I've tried to pastor. And I've been 16 years at Calvary. And as he said, thank you, Calvary, for coming and backing your pastor. Uh, I've got a, a great delegation here tonight. I didn't know if all 240 of them or 50 were going to come. Uh, whenever, and we've got a good crowd on Sunday mornings. we just about to outgrow our building. But uh, as you well know, all it takes is Satan to come in. The next thing you know, we've got empty pews. Not going to get into a lot tonight, but to say thank you, Brother Jason, for inviting me. Uh, I do love you, and I love Miss Tiffany. I love Nolan. I understand he's getting ready to turn 18. And for that, uh, just hang on. because uh, He came to our church when we needed him, and he is an encourager. You don't know that. I'm, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. I got nerves like crazy. But um, I preached in Atlantic City, New Jersey two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever that it was. And I told Brother Jason, I'm more nervous coming here than I was going to Atlantic City, New Jersey to preach a revival. Now, why is that? I don't even see casinos here. I don't see the things, but the Lord did bless, and it'll show you how the Lord works. Uh, he'll even save a liberal. And if we've got any liberals here tonight, then he'll save you because he saved three up there. But anyway, thank you, Brother Jason. Thank you, Miss Cindy. My wife is here. And if I could get a pulpit mic for the altar, not now, but for the altar call, I'm going to have my daughter sing. Uh, you kind of took over Calvary when you came there. And you, you, used, 
you, you use the altar and Miss Tiffany would sing, and I don't mean took over. I mean that you, you minded the Lord. And if Tiffany had a song in her heart for the revival or for the altar, then you, you use that. And I want to do the same. And I believe I can do that here. And God would give us Lee. Thank you, Brother Jones, once again for thinking, singing that song. Because when I got up this morning, uh, I don't know if it was this gentleman or which gentleman, kept asking me if I would send them a copy or a, 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 an alliteration or what was it, my sermon outline. And uh, that's kind of problematic for me, brother, because uh, sometimes I'll get it going to the pulpit or sometimes I'll get it going to the church. But tonight the Lord has settled our hearts and I would invite you to stand and give reverence to the reading of God's word in the division of Psalm number 34. Give you a moment to find your place in Psalm number 34. Um, if I were to title the message tonight, it would be the blessings of brokenness. And that's why, Brother Jones, I, I referred to that as being a confirmation. I don't look for confirmation, but boy, it sure is nice to get one. I like it. And then you come up here and tar, start talking about just one year ago how that on Mother's Day you were broken and you come to a broken, uh, a broken man. And I'm telling you, you come to a broken man to broken people. But there are blessings. You listen to this preacher. There are blessings beyond your brokenness. I promise you that there are blessings beyond your brokenness. Psalm number 34, if you found your place, say amen. amen. Verse number 8 said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want in them that fear him. The young lions do lack and the suffer a hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. To hold, be, uh, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Now listen expressly to verses number 18 and 19, because this will become the text verse for the remainder of the evening. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I'm going to ask if I can, one of our deacons, Brother Danny uh, Byers, if he will, to bless our scripture reading, and then you can be seated. Brother Danny. Amen. Once again, thank you, Haynes, for being here, and thank you for those that have made their way down from Wilkes County. We went from Wilkes County to Atlantic City to Winston, so we are moving up in stature. So we have, we have finally arrived tonight, but thank you, Miss Cindy, for always being by my side. For those that don't know, uh, we've been married for 37 years. That is my daughter beside her in the little jean jacket there, and that is my granddaughter that is going through something back there that she shouldn't be. But anyway, uh, Miss Everly, and I, we have two daughters and two granddaughters, and uh, even our dogs were daughters. So we've just got a bunch of things going on, and they're all involved around women or uh, that kind of thing. So now you know why I'm broken. <laughs> but God uses broken things, and there are blessings beyond your brokenness. It takes broken clouds to bring rain. And I'm going to preach here in just a minute. This is a, a kind of like a little cursory 
uh, preface to get the message going tonight, to prime the pump. But God uses broken grain to bring us bread. He uses broken clouds to give us rain. He uses broken soil to bring us crops. He uses broken bread to give us strength. So it takes brokenness in life. It takes that. But the Apostle Paul wrote to the church, which was at Rome, in chapter number 8, in verse number 18, and I like the word reckon. He said, I reckon. Don't you like that? That sounds like he's a country boy. Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present life, the afflictions of this present life, the things that we go through now, our brokennesses, brother uh, Jason, he said that those things, I reckon those things don't even, they're not even worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. So God is going to break some things, but beyond the brokenness, there will be a blessing. And I will show you some things with the Lord as our help tonight as we preach through the Scripture tonight. But if you think really quickly, I'll just give you a few off the cuff tonight. Uh, Joseph uh, was the favored son of a man by the name of Israel or Jacob. And at times, Joseph was a broken man. I mean, uh, at one time, he, he's got the love of the Father on him, and uh, Daddy brings him the coat, and he, everything's going good, and it just seems like everything is perfect in his life. Uh, but all of a sudden, his brothers now have turned on him. His very brothers that should be loving him have turned on him. And as they turned on him, that broke Joseph's heart. You said, what happened to him? They took him and threw him in a dry well. And and being in a dry well, you said, well, at least the well was dry. Well, you can thank God for that. But this was God providentially using a man by the name of Joseph and his brokenness to do a great work later on. All of a sudden, Joseph is then broken up out of that dry well and then he's no doubt he's down and out and he's discouraged but then he comes up again and uh, now thank the Lord I'm no longer in the well thank the Lord I'm no longer in the pit but then what happens is they spied a band of Midianite merchant men and here comes the merchant men and here goes poor Joseph again he's from the pit now he's sold into uh, the Midianite merchant men's hands and you see that story. I'm not preaching Joseph tonight, but I'm trying to show you (coughs) that God took him from that pit all the way to the palace, but it wasn't a straight shot. He was in the pit. He was out of the pit. He's now a slave. He's in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife fixes eyes on him. Then she lies about him, and you know the story. He ends up in prison and meets the butler and the baker. That was all God providentially using uh, Joseph to get him to Pharaoh's house. It was not a straight trajectory from here to there. And neither will it be for you. You will suffer brokenness. I will suffer brokenness. This pastor no doubt has been broken. No doubt Miss Tiffany at times has been broken. And because they're broken, no doubt Nolan has suffered brokenness and questioned his faith and questioned church. And we ourselves, we question God at times. (coughs) Even as Brother Andrew said, whenever he told that story, you had to have questioned God. There's no way you could not have questioned God. But it's okay, even our dear Savior When he hung on the cross, uh, he said, why? Why hast thou forsaken me? So it's okay to ask God questions. The whole book of Job is a back and forth discourse between Job, four friends, and God. And you see the brokenness. But there was blessings beyond the brokenness. I don't mean to go from zero to 60. I'm going to tell you this is a funny. Y'all don't know me. I'm crazy as a bat. They had a fence up there in New Jersey that was about this tall. And it went all the way over to there and all the way over to there. And I was fenced in. And I like to walk. I like to go down here. And I want to come down here and tell you about other people that might have been broken. There was a man by the name of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was broken. He's from a disgraced family. Okay, the whole family had been slaughtered. And here is uh, Mephibosheth in the land of Lodibar or the land of no pasture. He's from a disgraced family. He, he's got nothing going for him. And all of a sudden, the king's looking for him. 
You don't think that that's going to cause a broken, lame four-year-old boy that fell lame now later on in his teen year? That's a little bit of consternation at heart uh, that, uh, hey, the king's wanting me. Going to get rid of the rest of the house of Saul. No doubt that's what he's thinking. But about that fence, I tore the whole thing down. I was up on top of it walking, preaching about faith. And the next night I was trying to get over it and my foot caught on a communion cup holder and ripped it off. It was terrible. I like this place. We've got a lot of room to walk, but I'm not sure about these tripping hazards. But do you see what happened beyond Mephibosheth's brokenness? He was lame on both of his feet. The nurse fled, and in her flight, he became lame. We became lame because of the fall of another. Amen? And as we become lame by the fall of another, he became into that disgraced family lame on his feet. But his brokenness did not define him. And I ask you tonight, don't let your brokenness define you. Do not let it become bitterness in your soul. Use it to become better and use it as a blessing for God. <clears throat> because what happened, the king then, he said, hey, go fetch him. And Mephibosheth said, why would you come and get me, such a dog as I am? But the Bible said that his blessing was that Mephibosheth got to eat at the king's table continually. Amen. Do you realize that? You've got the king of all glory, the most high potentate, the Lord of lords, the, the Lord of hosts, and he loves you. And it is the Father's good pleasure to give us, give you the kingdom. He wants to bless his children. I hope that we're all right tonight. I got a lot of preaching me tonight to get where we're going. What time did you tell me to quit? Naomi, and I, I, I've got the scriptures. Let's go back and get them and just listen as I preach and you'll follow along and you'll see the blessing beyond the brokenness. The Bible said the Lord is nigh. What is nigh? It is near. He is near unto them. If you don't understand the scriptures, he's got your back. He's got your front. He's always with you. The Bible said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you say that backward, pastor, it's thee forsake nor thee leave. Never will I. He's got you going forward. He's got you coming backward. It means the same thing backward as it does going forward. He will be with you. He'll be with us. He'll be with the church. If you don't think that he will reside and be with the church, why would he abandon that that he died for? Why would he abandon that that he's betrothed to? Why would he just totally, uh, just totally erase his church or, or be ill toward his church? He wants to bless us. <clears throat> I told you, how can a blessing come beyond brokenness? There was a lady by the name of Naomi. She's nothing more than an obedient wife. Now, you can fault her for going to Moab, leaving the land of bread, the house of bread, and going to God's wash pot. You can fault her for that, but she was the obedient trailing spouse. Elimelech has decided to go there and sojourn there, but he stayed too long. You would be better off in the land in a time of drought and being in God's will than being in a place of plenty and being out of God's will. But what happened is her brokenness. You said, where's the brokenness for Naomi? Naomi is down there, and her two sons have now married the Gentile brides. And as those Gentile brides are in the picture, we've got two ladies by the name of Ruth and Orpah. And as we see them, the brokenness comes because while they're there, it, the husband died. Elimelech died. And when Elimelech died, it wasn't long. There's not just one grave. Now there's three graves uh, in the land of Moab. And we see such a broken lady by the name of Naomi. And if you'll remember in chapter number 1 and verse number 21, when she comes back to Bethlehem, Judah, she's got something with her. What has she brought back? She brought back a daughter-in-law. Not just any daughter-in-law. But when she comes back, she sees her barrenness. She sees her brokenness. Because she said, call me not my Naomi. Don't you call me Naomi. Call me now Mara. For the Lord hath dealt very bitterly with me. She said, "The Lord, I went out full, but the Lord hath brought me home again. Empty. She went out full, but she comes home empty. That sounds to me like she's broken. But what was the blessing beyond the brokenness? What did she bring back? She brought back Ruth. You said, what's the importance of that? 
Well, only if you believe that Boaz begat this and that and uh, Boaz the courtship uh, uh, that finds Ruth gleaning in the fields and threw out some handfuls of purpose uh, and then that God put Ruth uh, into the very lineage of Jesus Christ. You can't make this stuff up. There was a blessing beyond her brokenness. And that brokenness that, 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 that you're feeling and that brokenness that I feel, that brokenness that your pastor feels, there is a blessing beyond that. COVID kind of weaned. I don't know how it did here, but Brother Danny and Brother Jerry and Greg and Miss uh, Brianna, y'all know this. COVID weaned out some of the people that were on that fence. I don't know if y'all had any of those. We had some fence straddlers. And if you straddle the fence, my dear, you're going to get a splinter in your backside. They were straddling the fence, but what happened? Oh, we can't come. We might get the virus. We've lost people to the virus. Brother, we had funerals. We've got graves in our cemetery because I spent a week in the hospital with the virus. My brother Kenny Baldwin was in the hospital with the virus and now preaches on a stool. A Pastor Brady Hayworth, one of my dear friends, he, he just about passed away after 37 days on a ventilator. He had, it was real. But the people that would not come to church because it was too much to deal with, they were at Lowe's and Walmart and they were at ball games and this and that. What happens is that brokenness that we just come through, man, it fortified the faith of the church. Brother Jerry, our church is strong. Our church is, your church, it should be stronger now. Sometimes the dead limbs or the dross has to be boiled out or taken off the top. And when that happens, the church goes forth and it shines like gold. But beyond our brokenness is the love story. You say, I don't understand that. <coughs> None of us enjoy brokenness. Does anybody here enjoy being broken? I'm looking at you. I don't like it. Why don't we like brokenness? Brokenness leaves us bare. It leaves us vulnerable. It leaves us exposed. It leaves us in a position where we don't know what might happen next because my brokenness, a lot of times, have you ever heard it said that, that maybe if a spouse dies, your husband dies or your wife dies, to not make any decisions for about a year? Y'all ever heard that? They say if, if, a, if a loved one passes away, don't do anything hastily. Why? Because you're going through a time of brokenness and you shouldn't make those important life-altering changes during a time of brokenness. None of us enjoys brokenness. I don't enjoy brokenness. This pastor doesn't enjoy brokenness, but there are blessings beyond the brokenness. Psalm chapter number 34, verse number 18, it said that the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and, those, and saveth such as which a con contrite spirit. Contrition is missing. We've got the brokenness, but nobody wants to be, have a contrite heart. And, and I'm telling you, that's what it's going to take. We've got to get right with God, but we've got to get raw before God before he'll then show us the blessing. <coughs> I hope that you guys are still following along with me. Do you remember the brokenness of a man by the name of David? David has committed a grievous sin with Bathsheba, and she then bears the child of that adulterous relationship. I'm not going to Nathan and all the things and the ins and outs and him having Uriah murdered, but what happens is the child is now born. And the child subsequently dies. God calls the, the male child home. Do you remember David and his brokenness i mean he is just raw he was before god and he makes the determination whenever they come in he's cried he's put sackcloth and ashes he's down as low as he can go but he can't bring the baby back he says i can't bring the baby back but i shall go to him the 51st division of psalm is david's heart I want to read one verse out of the 51st division. This is David's tearful cry in the 51st division of Psalm after he has committed the sin with Bathsheba, after Nathan has put it in his place, but him in his place, showed him the finger saying, Thou art the man. David says in the book of Psalm 51 and 17 that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou wilt not despise. Are you following me tonight? Sometimes life's 
circumstances, they break us. Uh, it could be friends. Uh, it could be any different ina uh, inevitable things that just happen through life circumstances. <coughs> Don't mean to bring up anything to harm my wife. I wouldn't dare. But on March the 4th, 2022, she lost her daddy. I've got a strong wife. For 37 years, she's been my wife. I know her, and she knows me as well as anything. But that morning, Miss Macy and Miss Cindy had got the guitar. And Macy's off work now, and she's going to go over there. They're going to go to the hospice house, and they're going to sing a few songs for daddy. So she calls me at work, and, and she said, uh, we're going to go see Daddy, and we're going to be leaving here just for a few short minutes. And I, I, I said, okay. And I was supposed to go to a funeral uh, of another employee that, I, that was in my, uh, that got killed in, I, without giving you all the details. I was going to a funeral. But she called me back, and she was broken. And she said, we can't go. We can't, we can't sing for him because he's already gone. I said, I'm on my way. So I took off and I went to the house. And then I come in the door and got her and we went on over there. <coughs> I, I'm not trying to... I just want to show you something. When we went into the nursing home, into the uh, hospice house, if I had not been holding her, she would have been in the floor. Because when we went in, Brother Jason, she saw her daddy. The night before, he looks like he's resting. He looks like he's asleep. He's not struggling for breath. He, he just looked like he was at peace. But the, the look of death is different than the look of sleep. And when she walked in the door and saw her daddy, or what was the earthly tabernacle of her daddy, oh, she was so broken. It... it I didn't know how she was going to get through it except that I had lost my mother. And as I had lost my mother uh, back in 2018, we were there and Brother Steve Pope was running a revival for us. And the night that my mother passed away, Brother Pope called me. Y'all know Brother Pope, I guess. And Brother Pope called me and said, Pastor Mark, he said, I, I think maybe uh, you're wanting to call off the revival. And I said, no, don't call off the revival. He said, well, preacher, I know you're broken, and I know your mama just passed away, and I know your church wants to be there for you. And the same as Miss Cindy's daddy passing, it leaves a brokenness. I said, Brother Pope, go ahead and have the church. I'll be with the family. I won't be there tonight. Lord willing, I'll be back the next night, but you go ahead. You said, what's the blessing beyond the brokenness? That night, Brother Pope went up there, Brother Jason, and he preached his heart out. And one of our young children come to know Christ as his Savior that night. There was a blessing beyond that brokenness, and God used that. I, if I'd called the service, you said, well, God could have saved him at another time. I know that he could have, but he chose that night, that man, that message to save Connor Blackburn. But there's a blessing beyond the brokenness. Now, listen to me. I know church hurts are real, but how come there's not work hurts? How come there's not school hurts? How come there's not shopping hurts or some other type of hurt? Why is it always church hurt? And I, I've been hurt in church. You have been hurt in church. If you've ever been to church, you've got hurt in church. But the reason that it is so painful and the reason that the blessing uh, sometimes is out there somewhere is because we hold this as a sanctuary. You remember Quasimodo? He goes to the sanctuary. We're supposed to be safe in here. We're supposed to be okay in here. But when we're in here and then we get hurt in here, that is a grievous wound that is hard for us to ever recover from. But there, I'm telling you, there are blessings beyond the brokenness. You've just got to stay with it. You've got to get behind the man of God, prop up the house of God, stay in the word of God, and pray to the God of all glory that can bless you in that brokenness and beyond it. We take our worship seriously, and you should take your worship seriously. This evening, I'm, my hope is, I guess, to turn somebody's brokenness 
through the Word of God into a blessing and let them feel it and let them see it and let them sense it and let them live in it and walk in it and worship in it and praise in it and sing in it. One time you sang in the choir and now you no longer sing in the choir. One night you come to Wednesday night and now you no longer come to Wednesday night. One time you were involved in every festivity and now you can't be found and a team of FBI agents could not find you. Get beyond the brokenness and let God help you because there's a blessing just beyond that brokenness. <coughs> In the short time of that brokenness, I told you about Miss Cindy. She'll tell me if I'm wrong. Brother, it, it, the brokenness was there. We drove from Dobson, from the Waltz Hospice House there in Dobson, back home. And before we got home, there's phone call, phone call, text, message, message, food to the house, food to the house. And, and it was just, we were inundated with God's blessings. Yes, she was broken, Brother Jerry, but there were so many blessings that come beyond that brokenness. It was God's children looking out after the pastor's wife. It was God's children ministering to the pastor. And when you come there to a church that was broken, you're a broken pastor. If you hadn't been broken, we were broken. You couldn't have been a blessing to us. But if we weren't broken, when you got there as a broken man, we couldn't have been a blessing to you. God used that brokenness of a pastor to help a broken church. God used a broken church to help a broken pastor. I remember calling you to the front. And I'm not giving up anything, Brother Danny. Y'all were there. Our deacons were there. Brother Greg, you remember we called Brother Jason to the front. Miss Tiffany may have even came with him. And it was almost as if it was a deacon or a laying on of hands, an ordination, if you will, type of a prayer circle. And we pray for your pastor. Oh, he preached his heart out that week. Brother, you helped this preacher more than you'll ever know in a thousand lifetimes. You could not know what you did to help this preacher and what you did to help that church. But we were broken. Oh, but the blessings that come beyond the brokenness. I'm just being real here tonight. Let me give you a few quick things. I know I'm preaching long and preaching. Do you remember in Luke chapter number five? Let down your nets for a draw. And the Bible said that they let their nets down. Just if you want to flip there really quickly, I'll just cliff notes a couple quick things to show you the blessings beyond the brokenness. Luke chapter number 5. The Bible says in verse number 6 that when they had done this or when they had took him at his word, they said, nevertheless, at thy word, we will let down the nets. And there they've let down the nets. The Bible says in the latter part of verse number 6 that when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. You said, what's the blessing beyond the brokenness? The Bible said, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were the other ship, that they should come and help them. And then they came over. Then both ships began to sink. So now you got broken nets and broken ships. You said, well, what's the blessing in that, preacher? You read on. The Bible said in verse number 9 that he was astonished that all that were with him at the draw of fish. They got, they got their fish. They got their catch. That's a blessing. But look beyond that, look to the next verse. And also were there James and John, the sons of Zebedee, those sons of thunder. Here they are. Look what God did unto them, <coughs> which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, fear not from henceforth, you shall catch men. The blessing beyond that, he took their storm. He took their brokenness. He took their broken boats and broken nets. He said, you didn't need them anyway. That draught of fish is your final catch because I want you to catch men. I want you to go out and preach the gospel. You're going to be followers of me. And bless God, the blessing came because the church is about to be birthed into this world. And God used those men to do it. That was blessing beyond the brokenness. I don't know if I'm helping anybody tonight or not. I'll tell them, but I'm a, I'm a, can, I, can I be Calvary for a minute? Are y'all all right? I look at them all the time, don't I, Danny? Y'all all right? I asked them out up at Atlantic City, New Jersey, honey, and you know what they did? They stared at me like a calf at a new gate. And I'm like, uh-oh. Grace Ford's back there, and Grace said, whenever he goes to Atlantic City, I want to be there. 
didn't you, Grace? I want to be in that crowd. Miss Grace said, I don't want the camera on you. I want the camera to turn around and let me see their faces. <clears throat> but Miss Grace, they were loving. They accepted us. They, they eat the Word of God up. I mean, they just chewed it. They, they digested it, brother. They loved it. Matthew chapter number 14, just for a moment. I'm hurrying here. Just please be with me. Bear with me. Chapter number 14, verse number 13. Down through number 21. I'm just going to get there really quickly. We know the story. There's a bunch of people. The Lord sees their need, and he then says, what have you got? And there's a little lad that's just got two fish and five hush puppies. <clears throat> that's what he's got. It's a little lad's lunch. You said, well, I thought it was called loaves. I don't know a little boy that's going to carry on five lunch loaves. Do you? He's got five hush puppies. He's got two fish and five loaves. But I want you to see the blessing beyond the brokenness. The Bible says that he blessed it. If you're looking there in verse number 19, he commanded them to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up into heaven, he blessed it. And what did he do? He broke it. He broke it. The blessing beyond the brokenness, you said, I don't see it. Well, bless God, then you're not reading far enough because he fed everybody there. And not only did he feed everybody there, Brother Jason, but he picks up 12 baskets full of leftovers. There was a blessing beyond that brokenness. I'm telling you, my friend, if you are broken, there is a blessing on its way. Hang in there. Mark chapter number 2. I'll just hit this real quickly. Mark chapter number 2, there is a man that is a palsy. There is a man that is a paralytic. There is a man that cannot walk. And he's got four faithful friends. And those faithful friends have decided to bring him to Christ. They can't get to Christ because the house is full. They're all about the door. They're standing on the outside. They can't get to him. So what do they do? <coughs> if you look in Mark chapter number 2, the Bible tells you very quickly that because there were so many people gathered there in verse number two insomuch that there was no room to even get in the door what did they do the bible said that they came to him and when they couldn't get in in verse number four that they took they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had done what when they had broken it up let me tell you, that's a clay roof. It's a terracotta tile clay roof. And I can almost see them breaking up those big hunks of clay and moving that out of the way. And when the blessing was there, it was because Christ was in the house. Jesus is doing the teaching. There was a blessing beyond the brokenness because they got their friend to Christ. You say, what's all that about? You've got to get the clay out of the way. If you're going to get past your brokenness, you're going to have to get that clay out of the way. That envy, that jealousy, that covetousness, all these things that this flesh feels. And if you said, I don't see that in this parable or in this story, then read on. Jeremiah tells us in verse number, uh, chapter number 18 that we are clay in the potter's hand. Israel was clay in the hand of the potter. He doesn't throw the clay away. He just makes it again as it seems good to the potter to make it. Not as it seems good to the clay to yield, but as it seems good to the potter to make it, he makes it again. So there is a blessing beyond the brokenness. Broke up the roof. Can't you imagine, Brother Jason, they've took that one stone or whatever they've gotten. I told you it was coming. I just didn't know where it was coming from. I thought the lid was on there. Might as well get a swig now. This brother over here said it was left over from the foot washing. He said, that's some holy water. But can't you see them taking that stone, busting up that clay, pulling back a piece, and looking down through there and said, ha, ah, he's in there. Maybe getting her ear there and said, oh, he's teaching. We got to get our brother down there. There was a blessing beyond that brokenness. They broke up the roof and they got their friend to Jesus. <coughs> Mark chapter number 14. Mark chapter number 14. Are we still all right? Preacher, every restaurant right here is going to be closed time we get out of here. If you talk like that, you sound like Mr. Haney. On Green Acres. Some of y'all ain't old enough to know what that is. But some of you live there. <laughs> Mark chapter number 14, 
just go paraphrase this. When there's a cost, there's a criticism, there's a compliment, and there's a commemoration all in this same story. Did you hear me? There's a cost to worshiping the Lord. But there will be critics. There they are. Why was that? Why would you, why'd you do that? There's a compliment coming from the Lord. said, you leave her alone. She's done what she could. And there's a commemoration because he said, this is for a memorial unto her. It's going to be from now on. But what did you say? What's this about? She break the box. You see what I just, I didn't mean to do that. And that was a perfect illustration. If I take this lid off, if Mary had unpopped the cork of the alabaster box and she starts to pour it out, you know what happens then? Mary, Mary is deciding how much she's going to give to Christ. If she untakes the cork off of the alabaster box, she's going to determine her level of worship. She's going to determine her level of giving. But the Bible tells us, if you're reading down through there, in verse number 3, the Bible said, And being in, the, in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he said at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, spiked her, very precious. And the Bible said she did what to it? She broke the box. If you break the box, you're not putting any back. You're giving it all. You are yielding everything that you've got um, to the cause or to the purpose. And the cause was Christ was there. Christ was in the house. Christ is the one that's being anointed. And she said, I'm not keeping anything for me. I'm giving it all. And that's where we fall way short. We get broken, but we won't give God everything. We don't understand that beyond this brokenness, there is, listen to me, there is a blessing. Please hear this preacher tonight. I know I'm the least in God's kingdom. I'm standing where great men of God have preached before me. I know that. And I don't take it lightly that Brother Jason has even asked me to come down here. But I'm here to help you tonight. God wants to bless you beyond your brokenness. I got up this morning. We were preaching on judgment, chapter number 9, verse number 27, out of the book of Hebrews, that it is appointed that a man wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. I was going to preach on the color of the rainbow. I almost sent him a rainbow. And Brother Jay said, if I were to pull my phone out and show you, this is how quick a, a message can change. I'm telling you, my heart this morning when I got up, I said, I've got to send this picture down to Brother Jason's church because this is the message. And it was a picture of a big old rainbow. Oh, because the rainbow is the only perpetual sign. There's no more talking donkeys of Balaam. There's no more burning bushes. No more pillar of fire by day and cloud by night, or fire by night and cloud by day. There's no more of those. And this faithless and perverse generation is always seeking a sign. But at the 42nd degree, when God puts that refraction index on the clouds and the sun shines through, you've got a rainbow. <coughs> and you look through that thing. It's red, orange, yellow, indigo, violet, blue, Roy G. Bibb. But when we look up, we see those colors. And I was going to preach that. God said, not tonight, you ain't. And he sent me a thing, said, when am I going to get that illustration? How would you illustrate this? How would you alliterate this? Seriously, I mean, really. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 24. Miss Macy, if you'll come over to the piano, honey. Did you get her a microphone, Brother Jason? Chapter number 11. Now listen, don't fall out with your preacher here whenever I say the last one was where our Savior was broken. Don't fall out with me and say, there ain't a bone in his body broken. According to Psalm 22, the Bible said all the bones were out of joint, but there wasn't one broken. Okay, I'll use his words. Okay? Is that okay? I'll use his words. Because we know, I, I preached this before and somebody said, hey, you got that wrong. He wasn't broken. Okay, I'll use his words. If you've got a red letter Bible... Read along with me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 in verse number 24. And when he had given thanks, what do you do? He break it. And said, take, eat, this is my body, which is what? Broken. I didn't say his bones were broken. I used his words. He, ble he break the bread. And then he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. You say, well, where's the blessing in that beyond that brokenness? My friends, if he wasn't broken, if he didn't go to Calvary, if he didn't shed his blood, the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. So if he didn't go do what he did, 
The Bible tells us in chapter number 15 of the book of 1 Corinthians, if he's not raised, if he's not resurrected, if he's still yet dead, we're in our sins. And my preaching is in vain. Our faith is in vain. Everything that we're doing is vanity. And that's all that it is. And guess what, my friends? We're headed to hell. If there's not a blessing beyond his brokenness. Mr. Macy's going to sing us a song tonight. It's simply entitled, Run to Jesus. If you're here tonight, and it is you, uh, it could be one, it could be more than one, it could be Calvary, it could be Haynes, it could be a visitor, but if that is you that has refused to move beyond the brokenness, you've refused to embrace the blessing that follows closely aligned to the brokenness, if you refuse to accept that blessing, my friend, that's on you. Because God wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to save. He wants to touch. He wants to heal. That's what he said he come to do, to set the captives free, to set at liberty those that were bound. He wants to bind up the brokenhearted. He wants to help us as we stand over the house of God tonight.